Good morning and welcome to the Lord's house. We are gathered here this morning because he is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, this is normally our time for announcements. I wasn't given any announcements. Is, are there any from the congregation that needs to be made this morning? There's no announcements. That means that you are excited and ready to get started with worship this morning. So let's stand together, let's sing our opening hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence in eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, 
and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Live and reign, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. It is a great honor and privilege to read God's word to you. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And it was so. And God called the expanse heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were set, gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, and which is their seed each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their kind, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let there be for signs and for seasons and for days and years, and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and every living creature that moves, with which the waters swarm according to their kinds, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening. And there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock and creeping things, and beasts of the earth according to their kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to their kinds, and the livestock according to their kinds, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of heaven, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. 
and God blessed him. And God said to him, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the path of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us prepare to hear God's message for us today in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, give us an increase of trust, faith, and love so that we may obtain the peace that you have promised. And as we seek you and your forgiveness, let this message I'm about to give clearly show our salvation through your son's death on the cross and resurrection from the grave. In the name of Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we celebrate the Holy Trinity. By Holy Trinity, we mean God is three in one. There is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God is fully God when he created and still creates the universe. God is fully God when God lived and still lives in the presence of Jesus. God is fully God when God lived and still lives in the presence of the Holy Spirit who lives in our hearts today. These are not three gods, but one God. Our worship service always begins with the sacred words in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Technically, our worship service concludes with that same ancient formula in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. For 20 centuries, worship services have begun and ended in the name of the triune God. Life itself begins and ends with those same sacred words of the Trinitarian formula. We come to the altar when a new baby is baptized and we use those same sacred words. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And at the end of your life when you die and they put you in your casket into the ground or your ashes into the vault, those sacred words are again spoken, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, in the sure and certain hope of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Life begins in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and ends in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These words are bookends for the beginning and ending of our lives here on earth. The doctrine of the Trinity is also written into most church constitutions. I'll bet if you examine your constitution, you will read the words that we believe in the triune God. And the Trinitarian formula is also written into the Augsburg Confession, a foundational document of the Lutheran Church. I'm sure you're familiar with Article I of the Augsburg Confession. It begins with, we believe in the triune God. We believe in the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That God is fully Father, that God is fully Son, and that God is fully Spirit. We are a Trinitarian church, and the Trinity is an important document of our life and of our church. Without that doctrine, we wouldn't be much of a church. See, every car has a chassis. And you have to have a chassis on which to put the fenders and the engine and the wheels. You need to have something which 
holds the whole car together, and that's typically the chassis. Well, and everybody has a skeleton. And without the skeleton, our knees would be flopping along with our legs and our arms. We need to have a skeleton within the human body to stand up on our two feet and our two legs. Or what is a fish without a backbone? Well, we all know that'd be a jellyfish, right? A jellyfish has no backbone. And if we didn't have our doctrine, there would be nothing left but a spiritual jellyfish or a blob of spirituality. Our doctrine is like a chassis that holds the car together. Our doctrine is like a skeleton within the human body that holds the body together and allows us to stand up. Doctrine is like the backbone of a fish. That inner backbone gives that fish strength. And so it is with our doctrine. Doctrine gives our Christian faith an inner strength and holds the different parts of our beliefs together. Now our doctrine is expressed in three creeds. The Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, and the Athanasian Creed. Martin Luther said that the author of these creeds were like honeybees who went to different flowers to get honey from each of them. Similarly, the people who wrote these creeds went to different places in Scripture and took many phrases from the different places in the Bible and constructed a creed based on these biblical phrases. The Athanasian Creed, which we will recite momentarily, is the third great creed of the ancient church. Most mainline churches believe that the Bible is the inspired and authoritative word of God, and most all believe in these three creeds. Now, the Athanasian Creed was not written by Athanasius. Athanasius died 300 years earlier. But this creed was named after him who wrote the Nicene Creed. The argument in this creed was whether or not the Holy Spirit was fully God. Whether or not the God who lives in you right now is fully God. This creed confesses that same God who created the heavens and the earth, the same God who lived in body, heart, and mind of, of Jesus, is the same God who is fully present in the Holy Spirit. In this creed, it says very clearly that the Holy Spirit is fully God. We are a Trinitarian church. We believe that God is the creator of the universe and is still creating today. We believe that God was fully present in the person of Jesus Christ. And we also believe that the Holy Spirit is also fully God. Think of the play by Hamlet. Or think of the play Hamlet by Shakespeare, or any other play for that matter. The play was first in the mind of Shakespeare. And secondly, Shakespeare wrote it down on paper. And then thirdly, the play was acted out on stage. Which of these three expressions is truly the play of Hamlet? In the mind? on the paper, or acted out on stage. All three expressions are Hamlet. These are different expressions of the same Hamlet. Similarly, that's the way with God in the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three are expressions of God. Even if 
I have several different personas or roles. You know me primarily as Pastor James. There's a certain persona to that. You know me as the person who preaches, teaches, cares for you, counsels you, and is a friend to you. Especially when you know me, you know me as Pastor James. Well, there are several other dimensions to me that you don't know about. I'm a husband to my wife, and we have been happily married for a long, long, long time. (laughs) We have an emotional and physical intimacy that you may think you know about, but you really don't. Our relationship is between the two of us, and you are not part of that core of our feelings towards each other. You can observe our relationship, but the intimacies of that relationship are only known to the two of us. My wife and I share an intimacy that none of you are a part of. We have a knowledge of each other and do not share that knowledge. I'm a husband to my wife. A third part of me that you really don't know about is the younger me. Now, there may be all kinds of apocryphal legends about my younger self. Some of those legends are true and some of them aren't. Sometimes I think I don't even know where fact and fiction begin and end with some of those stories. I've told those stories so often that I actually begin to believe some of the legendary aspects of them. You may have heard some of those legends, but you don't know the story like my mother and my father do, or my brother or my sister, or my aunts and my uncles or my cousins know those stories. These are people that know the younger me, but you don't. There is a child inside of me that you will never know. All in all, there is a wonderful complexity to me as a human being and to you also. There is the person with the persona of a pastor. There is a person with the persona of a husband. And there is a person with the persona of a child. To know me in all my complexities and all my fullnesses is to know me in all my personas. So it is with God. To know God in all of his wonderful complexities and personas. You need to know God the creator who at the same time is the loving father. You need to know God the son who loved you so much that he died on the cross to forgive your sins. And you need to know God the Holy Spirit who is in you and with you at this moment. And it's only when you know the full personas of God that you can truly know God. Oh, I'm going to ask you to do something which is impossible for you to do. Would you imagine that there has never been any Christianity and there has never been a Jesus Christ in that situation, would you, what would you believe about God? Well, there is no Christianity. There is no Bible. There is no creed. What do you believe about God? Your answer, well, there must be something that created it all. That something that began, it must be incredibly large That something must be incredibly intelligent. That something that began, it must have had the mind of beauty because there is so much beauty in things created. There's a sense of mystery to it all. So these are the conclusions in your mind. In all all its intelligence, 
can come to uh, is about God. But based on the revelation of Scripture, you come to different conclusions about God. The God who created the heavens and the earth the God who loves you infinitely more than any earthly father or mother ever could. You don't come to such conclusions by your own logic, intellect, or even your own brain. You don't find such conclusions about God in your head. You can only discover those conclusions through the revelation in Scripture. That God loves you so much that he was willing to suffer and die for you on a cross. You don't find that truth in your own intelligence or understanding. But you find it in the revelation in scripture. That this God is fully present in your heart and is it with you this day. Such truth is not discovered in one's own reason, but only revealed to us in the Holy Scriptures. On this festival of the Holy Trinity, we find the truth about God and the truth about the Trinity. God's Word reminds us that while we often emphasize the distinctive roles of the three persons that compromise the one true God, you can experience joy and hope because of your confidence in God. God the Father, God the Son, and Holy Spirit who works together to bring about your salvation and life everlasting. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. We now recite our common faith and our doctrine together using the words of the Athanasian Creed found in your bulletin. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. That we worship one God in Trinity, in Trinity and Unity, Creator, 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 Creator,
For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated, or three infinite, but one uncreated, and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, The Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but utterly Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co eternal with each other, yet co eternal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity, the unity in the Trinity, is to be worshipped. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all things. And he is equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity in the flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity in the Father. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead. Ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. 
Let us continue with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the church of the holy Lord God, called out of darkness into his marvelous light, and purchased with the precious blood of Christ, that she would be kept in the true faith, without error, schism, or compromise, until he welcomes her home as his spotless bride. Let us pray to the Lord. For the light of Christ would shine through us so that others may see our good works and give glory to Father, who with the Son and the Spirit created all things. Let us pray to the Lord. For the protection of our youth from all sin and temptation, for broken families that they would confess their sins and forgive each other as Christ has forgiven them. For those who celebrate their marriage anniversary, especially Jim and Ann, that their love may never grow weary. And for our elderly as they cope with physical limitations, that they may cling to God's mercies, which are new every morning. Let us pray to the Lord. For the preservation of government and law to protect the weak and foster godly virtue. For our president, governor, and all who make and minister and judge our laws. For the armed forces, emergency medical workers, and for those who inform us. And for those who would, op who would oppress with mistruth, violence, or fear to be frustrated. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, lonely, whose hearts are heavy with grief, or, or who are in any need, especially we pray for Travis and Steve, and Kent, Dan and Jerry, Carol and Chloe, Jim and Wilhelmina, Charles and Jeremiah, Rusty, Leon, Nancy, Ken, Martha and Phil, Allison, Kyle, and Zach, and Norman, and for a pastor cons to consider and accept a call to ascension, and all that they would be healed and given relief by the Lord who upholds his creation and will at the last put an end to the curse of sin. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who receive the blessed sacrament, that they would show forth the fruits of the Spirit in lives of faith, repentance, and goodness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we take this time to collect our offerings and our gifts to the Lord.
stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord, in the confession of the, whole, the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and unity, in substance, of majestic co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you've created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.